Welcome there to another episode of the Struggling Hunters, episode 31. Uh, you got me, Joe, and then on the other side there, you got me, Eric, and together we're the Struggling Hunters. <laughs> uh, hopefully you guys enjoy, enjoyed uh, listening to our last episode. Um, we got another episode, we're present for another episode here. Um, let's see, I guess... I'll go ahead and get started talking about since I'm still doing the uh, since I'm still hunting, doing the late season Utah archery uh, tags. I bought I still got my deer tag and my elk tag. Um, I'm glad I'm still hunting, but I wish I was done. <laughs> yeah, um, sure. I think I'd rather you know transition more into uh, doing camera hunting you know trying to take pictures with the camera than trying to put something on the ground but still doing it uh went out this last saturday or last weekend um got off work again early on friday went up above bountiful here uh had, had a good time uh you know didn't really have any opportunities to shoot at anything but you know i had an enjoyable time i went up we got some snow now in the foot in the kind of the lower foothills and about halfway up the mountain. And I thought there's this one spot that I've been hunting off and on, had a trail camera on it a couple of years back and I gotten footage on it of elk and deer. And uh, so I've kind of always used that as like my go-to spot when I'm getting home off of work and cause it's not too far up the hill. And I don't think that many people hunted anyways. And, so I was like, well, it's maybe less, less pressured there, you know, you never know. I'm out in the woods. That's all that matters. If I, you know, if I was just sitting at home, I, I'm not out there anyways. So I was like, this is just a spot to go. So I thought with it being snow, um, I would run up and, and see if there's any tracks. So I parked the truck. I uh, didn't see, I parked the truck on the south side of this ridge. And it's not that big of a hike up over to the north side. Um, and as I was doing so, I was trying to check for tracks, trying to see, you know, like what was around. And I didn't see anything on the south side, crested over, went down the north side, come across a couple tracks. And there was one track, like the ridge runs north and south. So I took, and I was wanting to head, I should have probably paid attention to the wind, let the wind be my, my, uh, deciding factor but you know just me being like well it's not that many tracks anyways i'll just i want to go east and that's so that's the way i went and uh followed and i'm following those tracks and i stopped by the tree i can hear this bird screaming and uh stopped by this tree just to kind of like let things happen and or see if anything was going to happen uh as soon as I did that, I looked up and right then there was this bald eagle that landed in the tree, kind of up just a little bit waiting, you know, not back the tree next to me, but anyways, he was up in the tree above me and that was kind of cool to see how that happened, you know, see that. I thought that was a kind of cool, that was a fun experience and trying to get the, the my phone out to get a picture and about that time it flew off, but uh, kept going and following these tracks and I guess so the tracks like I said there's tracks going east to west and I was I went east not that I was necessarily following the tracks and I cut a couple of few more tracks but not a lot and and finally the tracks that I was following hit a spot turned around and went back the other direction like the same direction I just came from so I was following the old tracks not the new tracks mm. but anyways so I'm going along, you know, doing my thing. And I stop at this like little clearing on the side in, in these pine trees. And I can kind of see this other little ridge, not too far from me, you know, within, I think a good rifle range, but not, it's probably like three, 400 yards. And I look to look across and uh, I see something in the trees. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> it's bigger than a deer. It must be an elk. So I get a little excited because I was like, oh, I got plenty of time. I, I could put a play on this elk, you know, and, and get around to it. And and uh, it's going to work out great. 
So I get pull up the binoculars, start looking. Oh man, that's a moose. <laughs> so so I saw a moose set. Um <laughs> but uh it you know, what like discouraging it wasn't an elk, but I, I get I did get to see an animal. So I sat there for a little bit and it, I think I could I think it had a calf with it, a little cow, you know, a little baby with it, but it was it wasn't it wasn't a baby little one, but it wasn't a looked like it wasn't a full grown moose. But uh so I, then I popped back over on the south side of to get on the south side of the ridge and as I did so then I, I found like I felt like a highway of tracks like there's just you know a good width of tracks and it was all padded down and I was like man I wish I would have found this earlier I just would have followed tracks you know all day not you know did what I did so I, I followed them a little bit in hopes that maybe it, you know there'd be something bedded down I, I I couldn't tell which ones were older which ones were the freshest I just chose a pair and went with it and followed them until it got, you know, kind of too dark to, to do anything and just headed back to the truck. And that was Friday, Saturday, slept in, <laughs> didn't get up as early as I was wanting to, but spent a couple hours Saturday, ran into another hunter. He was saying that he, he saw, you know, a little fork and horn and, couple tracks cutting the trail that he was he went he went up a lot further than I did up the side of the mountain and he's like I just didn't see much tracks we kind of talked about how it was kind of odd that you know being that there's a rut maybe a rut going on you know that we haven't been seeing like the rut activity yeah you know I don't know I honestly I guess I can't say I, as I can assume what it is I, I don't know if actually really you know, seeing a buck cruising for does or whatnot. You know, I've seen them on TV, but nothing really in, in person. And so I didn't, I saw, I dove off a little bit after I saw him and went down the side of the, the hill and thought maybe I'd, I would uh, cut more tracks because it, there was snow that, it snowed that, that night and there was tracks the next morning. And I only cut like three, I think I cut a doe and a fawn and then I got down a little further and I cut some other tracks. I probably should have, should have uh, followed those around, but instead of, again, I, kind of the same little meadow that I found two weekends ago, I just sat down and watched, watched that for hours. But I was, I was there for a long time. And then I, I didn't want to come out of the, off that hill in the middle of the, uh, not in the middle of the night, but just at dark. So I took off when it was starting to get closer to dark. I hiked back up, got to the top of the ridge, started hiking down. And so I was getting close back to the truck. I noticed there's this a doe and a, I don't know, if, I wouldn't say a fawn, but you know, he was, it was a, probably at least a year old. It popped out into this little field and <clears throat> a couple more popped out around it. And there happened to be a little fork and horn and it was right at that moment to where it's, it's like, if I wanted, if I wanted to put something on these, I had to take off then mm -hmm. to do something because it was approaching darkness and legal shooting time and whatnot. So, but you know, I was like, well, I don't know if I take off now, I don't know what they're doing. I'm going to get down there and probably spook them. So I sat down and watched them for a little bit and they ended up moving from where I, where I first saw them. And but then I, like I said, I just ended up watching them two or three different spots. And then as I, just before it got too dark, um, I, I was, as I was hiking down, they were kind of on this other little finger and there was a meadow or I guess a clearing, you could say a big, good size one in between where I was and where those deer were. And there was a crest of the hill and I was like, oh, it'd be kind of interesting to see how close I can get using that crest of that hill, you know. And so I didn't get down and crawl or nothing, but I just kind of went slow and paid attention to when, when my head popped up and what I could see there. And they were on full alert because I I just barely crested it. And there's one doe's head just like 
<laughs> snaps, you know, like, <laughs> there's something. <laughs> and she, I don't know that she knew. I, I mean, I'm sure she saw me. I was kind of one of those like skyline deals because, you know, my head would pop up across the crest and it'd be easy to see. But that didn't spook them or nothing. And I just, you know, again, I was like, oh, should I put a move on? By this time, it was way too dark. So, and it wasn't pitch. It wasn't like nighttime, but it was just too dark to shoot. Right. So that was my Saturday. So we'll see. I'm kind of, kind of hoping I get something here soon. Just, I'm, you know, not that I ever really want to be done hunting, but just to, I just want to make sure I, I want to fill my tag, I guess. So. Yeah. Well, you need a little, little success in the, <laughs> that too, in the horizon. But, but I mean, like I said, I, I, I think I say it every time. Like I had a good time. I enjoyed, I enjoyed my time out in the woods, out, you know, off on the mountain. It was fun seeing the, those moose on Friday and seeing that bald eagle up in the tree. Out, you know, experiences I wouldn't have had sitting at my home. Yeah. It's amazing how many moose you've seen this year. Yeah. It's, it's especially the last couple of weeks. Like that's, that's yeah, just kind of nuts. <laughs> yeah. It, it seems like, uh, I don't know. You've been catching all the moose that you can't hunt. Right. I've been seeing a bunch of big bucks that I can't hunt. <laughs> so it's just, it's like, we're just kind of missing the, missing the flow of things, you know? Yeah. True. But you know, it's, and I, I don't know what exactly at all it is I'm missing. You know, I feel like there's something, I don't know quite what it is, like it's one of the things I think we've talked about it before. Like, you know, it's not that like I'm not scared of putting in the work to do it. I feel like I don't know if I'm just not paying attention to the wind enough or um, I'm sure that's part of it. And part of it too, is I think, you know, the deer population or maybe it's what the food uh, growth, you know, or where the food is. I haven't quite clued into that yet. Um, or maybe just, I haven't, I had well clued into where they're maybe I should do a little bit more on that focus a little bit more on maybe where the pockets of deer are going to that's are going to be that's one of the things I got thinking uh when I was coming down on Saturday watching where the deer were coming up out of is kind of the next ridge over from where where I was and it may not be as because I'm kind of hunting a trail right so you know, maybe the deer have just pushed off this other direction just simply because it's away from the trail. It could be. Maybe there's enough pressure around that trail that yeah. they want to be around it. True. And like I said, the other interesting thing, too, is I didn't see as many tracks. I thought for – not that I was expecting to see a lot on Saturday, but I thought for sure – cutting down that hillside that you know like i would see more tracks because i'm getting away from people but like i said i only saw if i go if i count the tracks count the deer by the by the tracks i saw i would have been just seeing three deer oh wow so hmm. so i don't know then it's like with the rut coming on too and it's not like i've seen a bunch of does just running all over so evidently rut coming up or should be going on now the deer the bucks are going to be where the does are so i think i gotta try to do some understanding on where the does are <laughs> <laughs> where the where's the women yeah. <laughs> oh man it's it's frustrating i mean and and just like my elk hunt because i kind of hear hear it coming from you you start questioning everything that you're doing because you're not really seeing the activity. And I mean, I, I honestly just think that, I mean, you kind of are doing everything you can. It's just, it's just, you know, wrong place, wrong time. Yeah. I think I'm not, the other thing too, is, you know, like I, not that I have a checklist, but I probably should have a checklist, but I keep, I seem to keep 
you know, we're re replaying the same thing. I'm not really going into new areas and trying to find them. I'm just on that mindset of like, you know, this is not that these are pressured deer, but just, you know, they might be, they're a little closer to town. So I don't know how their, their mindset is, you know, like if they're a little bit more nomadic i guess is the word i'm looking for or you know like they just don't quite have one or if there's a pocket somewhere that i that they've found that's enough away from people and i'm just and i'm trying to wait sit around and wait for that lone buck to come by now it looks like you know like without the so i guess i learned a lot this weekend being that i got to see tracks in yeah. the snow like i said like that one area that i went on friday I've always just gone up there because yeah, there's a bunch of trails on the hillside and it always felt like I've seen tracks, but uh, I never knew how fresh they were, but being that I didn't see all that much in the snow, there's not as much activity going on there as I thought there was. Right. And so that's the other thing too, is, you know, trying to understand, all right, I don't have the activity that I thought I have. It's time to just, check this area off my list and just keep moving. Maybe that's what, but yeah. But then the other thing too, is like, you can't really see everything. So it's like, you got the only way to see what's the only way to understand what's there is to sit and watch. So yeah, it's kind of an interesting game. <laughs> Yeah, it's just the yin and yang of everything. I mean, no matter yeah. what you do, you don't know if you're doing the right thing or making the right judgment call. Right. You know, like when you sit down and think, I'm just going to sit here and see what comes my way. You sit there for a few hours or whatever it is, and then you're like, man, I should have been walking around this whole time. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> You go walking around the whole time and you're like, you know what? I should have just sat somewhere <laughs> and seen what came to it's it just I, I mean, I just think it's kind of I, I don't know. I just feel like sometimes it's just kind of luck. I mean, I think luck has more to do with it than anything. I mean, you're out there, you know that I mean that's the same thing I said for my hunt was, you know, I was out there. I mean, I was doing everything I could and and uh, just nothing really went my way. Right. Um, I, I mean, luckily you still have a chance. I mean, like you said, you know, it'd be nice to kind of have a little success under your belt and have it be over with. Or, you know, I mean, I think if you get, if you get a buck, you could still go get your elk, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it would be nice to, to get a buck right now and kind of have that success, kind of get re-motivated, then focus on getting an elk. Right. Because I, mean, I guess what I'm saying is I, 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 I'm with you. Like, you're not tired of hunting, but you're kind of tired of the chase, if you will. <laughs> right. Yeah, ready. Ready to be successful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. I feel the same way. So, except my hunts are all over. So, I'm just kind of planning for next year already, I guess. Right. No, that, and that's like the other thing, too. Like, you know, trying to plan for next year now, you know, like as I'm still hunting. Uh, and what I mean by that is like, I'm trying to understand what I'm seeing now trying to interpret that like and being like okay next year when I get in this situation of like I guess being unsuccessful and being like okay what did I do last year and I wasn't successful now let's tweak it and try to go about it a different way like evidently whatever you know I did this year so far I haven't been successful so next year when I get ready to, to go hunting again, you know, like be, be like, okay, this is how I went about it last year. This year I want to, I don't know if it's, you know, try to be deeper in the woods 
earlier in the day or earlier in the morning. So that way when the sun comes up like um, deeper or, you know, maybe spending, spend a little, well, I, I want to spend, I won't, you know, like more time scouting COVID threw me off this year. Like, you know, out they shutting everything, shutting, I guess, travel down. Like, you know, there was people, I went off turkey hunting in the spring I heard stories of uh, like fish and game cops following people up out in the woods and checking to see where they were, um, like where they resided, what city or town or state they resided in. And because like, there's some places that, you know, like they, yeah. So like, you're like, Oh, you're not from this County. I need to ask you to leave. Wow. So I just kind of, you know, like, I was just like, well, I'm not going anywhere. And finally, like that led up a little bit. And my wife is all, uh, isn't your hunt coming up? It's like, yeah. <laughs> Are you going gonna to scout? Like, oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I need to start doing that. Yeah, it's just been a messed up year altogether. I mean, with the COVID stuff. And it's definitely played a part in a lot of, a lot of situations, but I don't know. There's still there's still hope, Joe. I think you'll get some. Knock on wood over here. <laughs> All right. No, I, I feel like I will, too. Like, I was – I mean, I, I, I hate to admit it, but I'm sure, like, other people out there, too. But, like, I was talking to, to Jen the other day, and I was like, you know, I think I just want to be done. Like uh, I've been going since August. Well, scouting, you know, since June, June, July. So like, you know, I was like, I just kind of want to not really want a Saturday back, but like, you know, just kind of be done. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it just seems the, like it's the way it worked. I mean, speaking of August, you know, one thing, your scouting actually had some success. I mean, we, we kind of, we were in hopes that we might get something right. Like that, that weekend that I came and hunted with you, uh, the weekend before you were seeing some nice big bucks coming down off the, off the mountain. And, and, uh, I mean, we thought, Oh man, this is going to be great. This is going to, you know, and they were just gone. They were not there at all. And yeah, and uh so we had to change the game plan and which was already kind of in the plans anyways but but i mean it's just the way it's kind of worked out this year uh my area for elk i mean i had big hopes for and i was like oh i don't see how i can't get an elk and then i figured out how i can't get an elk (laughs) so so we've been kind of we've just been kind of you know just playing that game all year and i mean that's the way it goes you know they say they say that uh only 10 percent of hunters are full and uh, true so i'm definitely with the 90 percent. that's why we're the struggling hunters <laughs> so we can relate to 90 percent of the hunters out there right <laughs> so yeah so if uh, if you're listening we feel your pain yeah. if you've ever struggled <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're definitely feeling it, man. It's crazy. And it's like, you know, it's like a, a reality check, too. Like, I think I've just another way of looking at it. Like I said, you know, this year is like I've kind of brought to light, like trying to understand my thinking and rethink what I'm thinking, you know, like try to interpret what I'm doing quicker or what's going on quicker and make changes to adapt to, to something else to to make it happen. Yeah, you know, like, but, but anyways, yeah, it's been, it really, it really tests a man as far as going through the struggles and, and the frustration. I mean, it really tests you. And I know usually I'm kind of, I'm kind of pretty mad at elk hunting every year about this time, but I guess because we're doing this podcast, I'm actually really excited for next year and I got some scouting plans in, in mind uh, to kind of, kind of knock out 
two and one, you know, to scout and, and uh, see where I come across the elk and keep it in mind for next year's hunting season. But also uh, to try to get content too for, for what we're building here with the struggling hunters. So I'm, I'm excited for next year's hunt is what I'm getting at is just being able to, uh, to, you know, just stay in it and, and hopefully hope have better results next year. Um, I'm going to try to play with the, with the draw and, and see if I can get a better unit. Uh, I mean, that's all kind of in the works and probably go over that in a future podcast and more in depth, but that is kind of in the works right now or part of my plan right now is maybe work the draw I don't, um, or see what I can get. I mean, I'm the draw is going to give me whatever it gives me, but you know, uh, I, I have been just doing over the counter tags for, for really ever. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it kind of brings up one other thing before we transition to what, what we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, the pressure, you know, I, I, have you been getting, have, has there been a lot of, a lot of hunting pressure where, where you've been hunting or just a few guys here and there? Um, I, I, I have, I just thinking it over like last weekend, uh, I, I saw a couple I saw a couple hunters, but nothing where I was hunting. The weekend before that, there was a few hunters like around where, you know, like, yeah, hunting the same canyon. So, like, yeah, there's pressure. Yeah. Well, so my point is, uh, it was kind of a thought I had a couple days ago was, uh, you know, I was kind of reflecting up back on my hunt and I felt like there was a lot of, a lot of pressure in that area, a lot more than what I thought there would be, if that makes sense. And yeah. it's kind of like everybody found out about that spot the same year I did. <laughs> um, and I think sometimes like pressure can actually help you, but sometimes it can destroy your chances. So uh, I, I feel like this year it, it it definitely affected my chances this year, but I mean, it could work both ways. You know, sometimes pressure can jump something and make it run right, right in front of you. And sometimes the pressure, the animals kind of know that there's a lot of pressure in that area and they just stay clear away from it. And that's the way it is. I kind of felt like that was the case this year. Uh, every time I felt like I got down in the, in the little draws where I wanted to be or where I was wa getting close to being, I'd see somebody across the Canyon or something. So I'd try to walk away and into another spot or whatnot, but you know, it kind of affected it a little bit. Cause I, I'm kind of particularly one, particularly one day in, in that I'm talking about. Uh, I was trying to get over to the other side of the, the canyon and about and about the time before i started dropping down to get over to the other side this is whenever i was by myself but um there was hunters basically where i wanted to go so i had to like turn around kind of come up with a new plan and uh i mean that's just the way it goes it's public hunts and i'm not mad at it i mean you know they 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 have every right to be there and i think I think there's two things to the, to this thought. I was kind of having this thought is, is um, I think right now the temperature of the times, there's a lot of people that are trying out hunting uh, with, with this kind of content, like a podcast like this, you know, and obviously the, the, the big guys that are doing it out there, you know, that the ones that have a pretty big following and stuff, you know, every, I think a lot of people are really getting amped up to, to get out in the woods and hunt for their food and and uh but you're you know 
at the same time, those people that have kind of had years like me and you've had so far, some of them be like, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of done with the hunting thing. You know, I thought I'd like it, but didn't get nothing. So what I'm kind of saying is like next year might not be as many people out as there was this year. Or I don't know, maybe it, maybe it'll be even thicker next year, but eventually it'll kind of swing back and forth where, you know, the guys that hunt every year are going to be out there. But some, uh, I, I feel, I mean, this is kind of a theory, but I feel like it's going to kind of swing back and forth at times. New hunters are going to come out and try it, fi not find success and get out of it. And some, some people will, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you know, like, but that, like, as I was sitting there thinking, it's kind of interesting on that thought too, because um, I don't, is there a limited number of tags that Colorado hands out? Uh, whenever it comes to over the counter, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I don't think so. Well, I can't say that it's unlimited, but um, like Utah, they're going to hand out more tags next year, more elk tags. Mm. So I'm kind of curious on, on how that's going to, there's already, I think there's an unlimited amount of uh, archery tags, but the rifle tags, they're going to up the amount that I think, I think they're going to give more spike tags out or something. Yeah. I want to say that I read somewhere. Um, I mean, I, I don't want to, I'm not willing to plant my flag with this, but I, I want to say that I read somewhere that over the counter tags for second and third, third season are unlimited in Colorado, but uh, I could be wrong about that. So I, I guess, you know, just getting back to your, your, your point, like, yeah, I felt like, you know, like too, like, you know, there was kind of quite a bit of people there in that area that we were at the first, you know, heading down into it. And I don't know how many of them were new or whatnot, but you know, there's that one group of people, guys that are from, came up from Texas and, and the other guys about our age, you know, I don't know. They kind of seem like it was their first year. And uh, I, as far as, I mean, that meaning like all their gear seemed brand new. <laughs> um, yeah. They kind of looked like they were sponsored by first light. Yeah, they all had the same sh um, pants on, the same shirt on. And not, I mean, when I say same, it was same style, same color. Yeah. But, um, you know, I mean, that's cool that they can do that and whatnot. But it was just, you know, kind of interesting. And and there's a handful of trucks that were from Minnesota. Um, so, yeah, you know, like it's, I'm sure there's going to be a little bit more of a, I, you know, in a way, I hope there's more of a uptick and hunting um what's the word like people that want to hunt but at the same time it's kind of bittersweet because more people out there means more pressure but you know so i'm sure the next you know i can't really forecast but you know, hopefully we're picking up a few more hunters so that way the future of hunting is uh is there but nice and strong you're right. But, you know, it's, I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of guys that, you know, like, oh, I didn't get anything. I'm not, I'm not driving clear back out there to Colorado next year. Cause you know, it's not, it's not cheap to be out of state and hunting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think so. Um, I mean, I feel like uh, last or not this last year, but the year before, uh, there wasn't as many people out quite as many. Right. Um, and I don't, yeah. Last year, like, I don't really remember all that many camps. I just don't know if that was just cause we we're on the other side of the unit or wasn't that many people, but coming out, I remember last year coming out, we got to that like convoy of trailers. <laughs> yeah. That, that, yeah. There was definitely more back, more in there than what we realized. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Uh, well, I kind of feel like that kind of transitions into what I wanted to talk about a little bit tonight is the fact that uh, we're on episode 31 and uh, doing this podcast is, it's been a lot of fun. 
and to kind of make sense of the transition uh that was part of the reason that i wanted to that were one of the ambitions for me to want to do a podcast about hunting was to show that support and and uh be a voice you know whatever that means whatever comes to that for hunting and and get people excited for hunting and and at least if nothing else you know understand why hunters hunt and and kind of keep that community strong um so you know like it's for me i'm excited to see all the hunters out there i mean yeah it does maybe affect my hunt you know or or reduce my chances with pressure everywhere else but i'm i'm excited to see the strong community of hunters and and we got to we got to kind of stick together you know i feel like uh this world is kind of getting crazier and crazier and and um it won't be long before they start trying to you know affect affect what we love you know because somebody filled out their hurt feelings report so um so you know the stronger we are as a unit and the more the more uh money we put in into the system for hunting and you know it just makes everything better uh helps conservation helps helps us do what we love and, and that was one of the big reasons that I started this podcast or me and Joe started this podcast. Uh, but it was one of my ambitions is, you know, I was like, man, I just want to, you know, contribute however I can in, 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 uh, you know, having a platform or, or, you know, building, building a, a voice. I mean, I kind of feel funny saying that, but <laughs> you know, I mean, eventually that's probably what it'll be. And so we're on episode 31 and, you know, it's been, it's been a, it's been a transition for Joe and I, I mean, we're kind of just regular guys that love to hunt and do our best. And obviously like this year, you know, we're not always successful, but, but we have a passion for the stuff. We want to stick with it and keep doing it for, you know, as long as we can and, and, teach the generations below us how to how to do this or how to stay in it and um so you know it's been it's been a it's been a ride i mean 31 episodes and i think in some parts we we've we're starting to find our our legs or or who we are as a podcast we're starting to find it i don't know if we're my personal opinion i don't know if we're quite there yet you know like we hopefully the next 30 we've kind of found our found our groove but uh i mean it's been fun i mean i think that uh we've improved every week you know not not every episode is a you know we hit it out the park every episode but we definitely have gotten better and and we're you know just plugging away trying to do the best we can and it's just been really interesting uh, seeing this thing kind of transform into what it is. I'm, I'm pretty proud of it. I mean, I'm, I mean, I think, uh, I think like we've, we've improved in ways where, you know, like I'm, I guess what I'm trying to say is like from our first podcast to now the, you know, our flow has gotten better, you know, I mean, we're just kind of, I, my motivation is on, on this is, I mean, I just always say like, I'm just going to do my best and forget the rest. Like that's kind of my, you know, my confidence builder whenever I do this is, is like, yeah, I'm not going to hit it out the park every time, but I'm going to do my best and forget the rest. And, and that's just the way it flows, you know? And, and, um, I'm hoping, you know, the next 30, we're getting, we're getting pop more popular with the podcast. We're, we're finding our legs We're everything is kind of flowing good and, and we're making a real podcast out of it. But with all that said, I mean, it's been fun. I mean, Joe and I, you know, we've been friends since grade school. And uh, I mean, I don't think we ever thought that we'd be in this position 
doing a podcast together, but I've, I think we've said this before, but, and some of you guys that have listened to us for a while, you, you know, or whatever, but you know, he lives in Utah. I live in Colorado. We're both from Idaho and we've been friends since grade school and being able to jump on here and do this podcast with Joe every week. Like it's just cool to hang out with my old buddy again. And so, you know, it, it means a lot to me. And, um, I, I don't know, it's just, it's been really great, um, being able to do that and kind of build this, this little platform, you know, hopefully in a few years or whatever, you know, we're, we're fairly sizable. I mean, I think that's kind of the goal. You know, we're kind of actually making something out of it. Uh, I know one other motivator that I've always had from the beginning is uh, wanting to kind of have something to build something uh, like this as a podcast. Because maybe one day whenever I'm long gone, my great grandkids or maybe even my grandkids, you know, be like, hey, what was what was Grandpa Eric like? And they'll jump on, you know, wherever this stuff may be. YouTube might still be around, but they might be able to type us up and and be like, holy crap, you know, that that's my grandpa <laughs> there. What a good looking man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's where I get my nose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> it wasn't my fault either. Though. <laughs> blame, blame, blame my, blame your great, great grandpa too. <laughs> <laughs> Don't just pin it on you. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't ask for this nose. <laughs> Thanks Joe for uh, pointing out my insecurities. <laughs> that's what i'm here for <laughs> but but uh no it's i mean it's just it it really means something to me in that aspect too you know to have some kind of legacy at least to my own family and then uh like i said uh doing this with joe i mean it, I, I don't know it's it's worth it just being able to get on here and you know we we kind of made uh we kind of made uh lemonade out of lemons yeah i mean this covid stuff started and the one thing that we started was this podcast and i was listening to other podcasts and they were doing zoom calls and stuff and i'm like well let me take you back a little further so the the podcast wasn't necessarily what was on the the front of our minds but we did talk like the the hunt season before we we're like ah it'd be kind of cool to do a YouTube channel. And, you know, we, we had no idea what that would look like or what, what all came into that, but we were like, Oh, that'd be kind of cool to do that kind of stuff. And then fast forward over to COVID and I'm listening to podcasts and, and they're starting to do use zoom zoom kind of blows up as this communicator video communicator. And um, so I reach out to Joe and I'm like, Hey, you want to, you want to maybe do a podcast with this zoom technology and Joe was all in, you know, maybe a little hesitant, but for the most part, you're all in. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, so we started it, you know, and, and kind of going, going into the, you know, just doing our best and forgetting the rest. And, and here we are at episode 31. So all I'm saying is, is, um, it's, yeah, it's been a great, it's been a crazy transition. And to the listeners out there, the, the reason that I bring this up or wanted to bring this up tonight was, was like, just to say thanks for, for hanging out with us, listening to us, giving us a chance and uh, watching us grow. And, and, you know, because of you guys, I mean, we we're still motivated to do it. We, we don't have the biggest following, but I feel like we have a big enough following that we kind of have a responsibility to tune in every week and do this stuff. So, True. Um, so, you know, it's been, it's been a, it's been a fun transition and we're still learning along the way, you know, Joe and I, we weren't, uh, 
you know, we're, we're, we're not, we're not in Boone and Crockett or, or, um, anything like that. We're not writers for magazines, you know, we're just regular guys that love hunting that have been hunting since we were young kids ourselves. And, uh, you know, all this is really new to us. I mean, we never, we never really had a thought of doing this kind of stuff and, and here we are, you know, doing it. And it's just been, it's just been a fun, crazy transition into our lives. And I mean, we're still having fun doing it. And, uh, it's been, I, I don't know. I just, I think my whole point to this was, was just like, thank you to everybody that's been listening to us and giving us a shot. And thank you guys for the support. Uh, with that said, I've been rambling on about this a little long, but Joe, is there anything that you'd like to add to all this? Uh, no, I'll start off by by uh, saying, to, like, you know, what I wanted to add is, like, yeah, it's, it's been fun to be able to uh, be uh, five hours apart, but, you know, a split second apart through Zoom um, to, be, to get on, like, you know, to be a, with COVID shutting things down and uh, limiting where you can be and where, who, you know, like where you can be in person, it's been nice to be able to hop on Zoom and, and uh, still talk to someone about hunting or outdoors or fountains, bouncing stuff off. And like Eric said, you know, it happens to be a childhood friend that we've known each other since we were kids. And, and uh, so, that, you know, it's, it's fun to be able to do that and reminisce about old times. So, it's, it's been great. And for those of you that are listening, like, you know, we call it the struggling hunters and I hope that, um, you know, hopefully you're finding value. Maybe not our information may not be the greatest, but it gives you, gives you something to reflect on what you're doing, you know, or, you know, these knuckleheads, are, <laughs> they are the struggling hunters for a reason. <laughs> and that's how we, that's how we feel. That's probably why we went with the struggling hunters. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but no, like, you know, you know like bottom line, you know, like I just kind of hope that whoever's listening, you know, like we either help light your fire for hunting to help, you know, get you over the hunt, the hump of your, uh, your struggles and, and to keep keep pushing you know like that's that it gets hard you know we're you doing these you know three to four days five day hunts you know that's you know getting up every morning going to bed and it, you know between getting up and going to bed you're hunting all day and you know maybe not eating the greatest and so you're not really as healthy as you could be you know that grind wears on you doing three to maybe eight, 10, depending on who you are, you know, 15 miles a day, I guess that gets pretty hard. And there's a lot to, you know, you're thinking about. And like Eric said, you know, this gave us an opportunity to a platform to uh, discuss what we're going through and hopefully people hop on and throw their ideas out too and help us get over our struggles and what we, what, what we may be blind to see. I feel like that's one of the biggest things too is, you know, you, you don't know what you don't know. And, you know, being a, I guess a male full of testosterone, you don't ever want to be wrong, but you're not, you know, like I haven't been successful yet. So I'm evidently doing something wrong. I'm trying to, after doing this episode, it might, you know, it takes me a while, but you know, I'm like, okay, I got to rethink what I'm doing. And I thought I've done that, but you know, I evidently there's things that help me to understand that, you know, where I'm at, the animals aren't as thick as I thought they would be. But yeah, so, you know, thanks again for tuning in and listening. Um, hopefully, you know, you're, you're smiling and laughing and, and uh, having a good time, or maybe you're struggling right there with us and maybe feel the emotion. <laughs> that you know that that you know we may be trying to hide but yet you know you can you can feel it and understand that you know it's 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 a difficult thing <laughs> but yeah uh well that kind of makes me think of something else too is that's one thing about this platform and you know we do kind of have some plans for a little bit controversial subjects in the future but at the same time uh 
you know, one of our big goals is, is, is this is something that you can tune into and laugh with us, laugh at us at times. And, and, but mostly we just want a pretty positive platform, you know, to where, uh, especially with how crazy the world is right now. And I mean, if we can kind of get you, you know, to kind of get your mind it, to escape somewhere else for, for an hour or 45 minutes, whatever our podcasts end up being, um, you know, kind of, like I said, laugh with us, laugh at us, you know, I mean, I feel like we kind of done our job that way. And I mean, we've been struggling, you know, I mean, to make it clear, like we've had our successes. I mean, Joe, Joe was successful a couple years ago and it's been a little longer for me, but we've had our successes. It's just, it's kind of been, we've kind of been on that, that struggle city for a while. <laughs> so, you know, uh, I mean, hopefully, hopefully it changes soon. But, and it, uh, you know, the whole interesting thing too is, you know, as far as that, like for me in the elk hunt this year, I haven't, I've, I've heard them bugling at night, you know, in my spike, in my spike unit that I was hunting. And I've seen them across the, the, the canyon. So I haven't really had, you know, close encounters for with the elk, but like, had I been a more understanding hunter, my deer tag could have been filled twice. I feel could have been filled twice this year already. But so, you know, like that's the, my, my takeaway is, is trying to understand this year where my mistakes were. So that way next year, I hopefully don't relive them. Yeah. So are you saying uh, with, with that, are you saying, cause you, you kind of pursued elk whenever you probably should have pursued a deer. No, like uh, I guess what I'm saying is like, I, I, as far as, an opportunity for an elk I didn't have this year yet. Oh, gotcha. But still can happen. <laughs> yeah. Well, it can. I mean, how many more months you got? December. I got till December. I got a month left for for the elk, and the end of the month, end of at the end of November for the deer. So I got the fifteenth, I think, for the for the elk. I got to double check, but it goes just a little bit into December. Oh, okay. Well, you still got, you still got plenty of time. True. Sort of. I mean, it's running mm -hmm. out, but you still got plenty of time. Yeah. It's not over for you yet. No. That's something, that's something. So to kind of segue into the future of this channel and the future of our hunts and what we expect or what we, what we're hoping to expect in the future. Uh, that's something that I feel like I made a mistake in. I, I, uh, one mistake that I'm kind of kicking myself in the butt for is I had an opportunity to draw for a deer this year. And, uh, it was my second draw. We've covered this in an earlier podcast or it was second chance draw rather. And, uh, I decided to not do it because, what was left over was not the most ideal areas to hunt. And, uh, I, I avoided it or didn't do it. And now I'm kind of really kicking myself in the butt for the simple fact that I'm like, man, I wish I could have just, you know, drew for a deer tag and then, and then at least I'd be out there hunting, you know, but, but I wasn't really excited about what was left over. So, so I, I just missed out on that opportunity, but now, now I'm kind of kicking myself in the butt because I can't go out and hunt, you know, my hunt season's over. You're kind of on the opposite side where you've hunted a ton this year. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, but I know for next year, uh, I'm going to try to, I'm going to draw for my, for my deer and, and elk and, uh, and just see what comes out of it. And I mean, like I said, go in depth on that a little bit later, but, uh, but yeah, I just, I kind of kicked myself in the butt that I didn't get that deer tag and, 
and uh, or at least try for it. I mean, I would have rather, I looking back, I would I would have rather tried for it and not got it than what I did do and not try for it at all and obviously not get it. And so, for that, I I definitely kick myself in the butt because uh, I have a pretty good feeling I might have got a buck this year if I would have. But I didn't know. I mean, right. Well, that's the, that's the hard thing. We keep talking about like, you know, this armchair quarterback, like, like, you know, that's like the hard thing about hunting is like, you're always like, well, had I only, but you only know that had I only after the fact, Yeah. you Uh, know, you know, had I only hung back or had I pushed a little harder, you know, like, like for me, like, you know, two weekends ago, you know, like had I gone a little bit further and set up where I wanted to, I may, you know, I could have had a shot at a buck, you know, but you don't know that like, you know, like I, you don't, you don't know until you do. Yeah. And that's when you, you know, you try to learn from your mistakes and tweak for next time. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. And I mean, Hopefully next year we're packed full of uh, success and, and hunting stories. And uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what it looks like, but hopefully, uh, hopefully it kind of goes a little smoother than it did this year. But there, like I said, it's just been a tough year all the way around. And, and, you know, that was one of our expectations is, I mean, we kind of put expectations on ourselves or we put extra pressure on ourselves because, we just started this podcast and we're like, Oh man, you know, we're doing this hunting podcast. Now we gotta, now we gotta get some animals. <laughs> and so it, it put a little extra pressure on us, but it was, it was good. It was, I mean, it was good. It was definitely a good motivator, you know, to keep plugging away and keep trying. I know for my elk hunt, I mean, I look back on it now and kind of wish I would have uh, done a few things different, tried to look harder in a few areas. Um, but with that said, I mean, I also feel like I worked pretty hard at trying to come up with something and just was striking out, but, um, but yeah, I mean, it was this podcast or doing this, this, um, platform was, was a good, was a good motivator to keep plugging away and trying to come up with content and, and it was fun, man. I mean, at the end of the day, this, this whole thing is, is a lot of fun and, uh, I, I mean, I'm, I don't know. I'm going to do it until we're not having a good time doing it. But I mean, so far I've been having a blast doing it and, and I don't see, I don't see giving up on it anytime soon for sure. So true. true. Um, but with that said too, like one thing, one thing that, or a couple of things that I want to focus on, I guess I kind of already said it, but as far as like having more, more hunting opportunities, um, I mean, I already said it that I want to definitely get my, my deer tag for the draw or draw my deer tag, uh, and put in for elk, but elk, I'll probably be more prepared to probably have to do another over the counter, but, um, but if I do draw something, that'd be pretty sweet. Uh, and then also Turkey season. And I might even try out for uh, bear too. I've never really done a lot of bear hunting before, but uh, I feel like the tag's not really that expensive and there's a lot of time in between now and then to uh, try it out and see what I could come up with. So, so I'm kind of, yeah, try that out. But uh, one thing that I really want to do and, and set up for next year is, is really pay attention. You kind of alluded to it earlier about, uh, I think you did <laughs> now I'm trying to remember if you did or not, but anyways, uh, eating better and exercise, uh, you might've brought it up before the podcast. That's why I said yeah, that, before the podcast. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm letting the cat out of the bag, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, anyway, the, uh, yeah, kind of, kind of getting, you know, uh, really working on the, on the, um, getting in shape and for, for, uh, hunting, I 
I felt like I feel like I've been in worse shape in the past, if that makes sense. But I mean, I I was I was uh, doing some stuff, but definitely kind of taking a priority on it. Um, I think the worst thing about getting older and hunting is is uh, it, you can get fatigued a lot easier. Yeah, that grind really gets to you. That's the, yeah. like, you know, I've always said it in the past. And I haven't really been a, a, a person of my word, I guess, a man of my word or my understanding. But one of the things is, you know, like I've kind of come to understand is if you want to enjoy like whatever it is you want to do, you got to understand what it takes to be able to do it. Mm. So meaning... I enjoy going out in the woods. I enjoy like, you know, like hunting and I want to be successful and I want to be able to have the, my, the best experience I can. And I feel like, you know, in order to do that, I got to be in better shape, you know? So that way it's not like, Oh, I'm so sore this morning. I'm not going out till later tonight, or I'm going to take today off or, you know, I, you know, out over a long, longer hunting period, it's probably a different story or it is a different story, but like, you know, you want to be able to get the most out of whatever you're doing. And, you know, and that being said, you know, I know a deer or elk or animals, you know, it's not, they're a habit or they're a creature of their habitat and their habitat keeps them in pretty good shape. So like, you know, they're going to be in better shape. So you kind of want to be in good shape too, to be able to and more or less compete with them. Yeah. Own it. But. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's a that's an excellent point. I mean, you gotta gotta try to get in better shape to keep up with them, and and uh, I I feel like I feel like that was that was uh, I feel like I did okay. I mean, I feel like I was in better shape than I have been in the past. Um. But at the same time, I could still feel it. like I, I just didn't feel like I was in good enough shape this, this year, obviously. And, and, uh, I definitely want to, I just want to eliminate that out of that factor out of the hunt as much as possible. I mean, you're always going to get a little tired. You're always going to, you know, the, the, I mean, the, the woods are, the woods are tough. The woods are rough. And, and, uh, I mean, you're always going to get a little, little fatigued or climb up a hill that kicks you but but at the same time it's uh you know the 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 more you can eliminate that that factor the better the better off you'll be and uh it's kind of it's kind of a double-edged sword for me because like my hunt i felt like i tr most of the time i kind of brought this up in the last podcast i think but every time I, I'd get down roughly about a mile into where I was trying to hunt from camp and then the scrub oak would get, start getting so thick. I couldn't really get around any further. So it wasn't that I was getting so much fatigue this year, but it was more, it was more of the, the, the landscape. But at the same time, especially like toward the the end of the week, yeah, I was just like, like I was just tired. I mean, you know, not really doing that amount of work up till hunt season. Then I'm doing, you know, anywhere between four and six miles a day walking around, which, you know, some people will probably be like, oh, only six. I do 10 or 12, you know, whatever. But I mean, that's about average of what I was doing, give or take. And uh, by the end of the week, I was getting pretty fatigued of doing it. And I was like, man, this sucks. Like, this is starting to be more of a factor than I want it to be as far as my physical fitness. So, yeah, I mean, that's really one of my major goals is to uh, get in better shape for that and, and prepare and, and uh try to try to uh try to eliminate that factor as far as fitness yeah yeah i agree with you i think with that being said we'll go ahead and uh we got a little 
saying I'll, I think we'll button up with and call it a night. Yeah, uh, that sounds good. So like we were talking earlier before about oh, what would you call them? Um, sayings, just, old sayings or something like that. Yeah, just old sayings that you've heard, but you might not know where they originated from. So the one that that uh, that I thought I'd do, uh, I had it pulled up, but my phone on here it is. So, so, so I guess before we we're done, I want to say thanks for listening to Struggling Hunters. Like, subscribe, tell a friend, uh, help us grow, uh, give us some feedback. I we I appreciate we appreciate you. <laughs> Um, just oh, yeah. watching us. Um, but hopefully, you know, you're turning your struggles into what would you turn your struggles into successes? Yeah. Graduating from a struggling hunter to a, to a successful hunter. Yeah. The <laughs> successful hunters. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so at the, my old saying that I came up with, uh, have you, have you heard a flash in the pan? Like he's nothing but a flash in the pan or I feel like I have. Yeah. Not, not a whole lot, but I feel like I might've heard that once or twice throughout my life. So I thought I'd choose that, that best one because it kind of goes along with like, hunt, not hunting, but with rifles. So, um, so muskets, so you, you know what a musket is? Yeah. For those of you that don't, a musket is like a black powder rifle, but my understanding is, so a rifle has uh, riflings in them. That's why they call the rifle. But a musket is back before they had rifles, riflings in them, and they were just a, a smooth bore. And black powder, flint and steel, ignition, ignition for shooting the, the, the projectile. So flash in the pan. Muskets had a, a priming pan, which was filled with gunpowder. When the flint hit the steel, it ignited the the powder in the pan, which turned, which in turn ignited the main charge of powder of gunpowder and fired the musket ball. However, sometimes the powder in the pan failed to light the main charge. In that case, you had a flash in the pan. Mm. So there you go. Yeah. No. That, that was. That's a pretty good one. I like that one. Yeah. I like that one. So with that, I, um, go I, ahead. I, I, well, since we're on it, I kind of have one that I thought was kind of, kind of funny, maybe a little insensitive in today's standards, but um, chow down. Uh huh. Yeah. So that chow down. Yeah. That's saying some was, burritos. <laughs> <laughs> that saying was started in world war two and, um, Chow what is a uh, is a Chinese breed of dog, and it became a U.S. slang for uh, for eating food because the the Chinese had the reputation of eating dog meat. Oh, or eating dog, I guess. So I don't know. I thought that one was kind of funny. Huh. So chow down. Chow down. Basically, it was just a slang for for uh to i guess make fun of the interesting the it's kind of interesting some of, the, dogs. some of those sayings have a little bit more of like a racial undertone than you realized <laughs> yeah a little bit uh yeah uh i thought that one was pretty crazy though because i i just never i guess i just never knew where it right. came from but right I mean, it's such a such a it's such a uh it sounds like such a harmless saying, but right, it uh, does. Like you said it kind of has a little bit of a racial undertone. So <laughs> true. Well, hopefully, all you out there can, I don't know, have a good time. <laughs> uh, continuing hunting or not, listening to us. Hopefully, you got some laughs, some cracks. Uh, helped us uh, understood some of our struggles with that. We'll catch you guys again. See you later. See you in the next one, guys.